This video will discuss the Hartree-Fock energy for helium at a qualitative level and discuss the basics of the Hartree-Fock procedure. So for our helium atom, we have our helium model where we have a nucleus with charge plus two, two protons that is fixed at the Cartesian origin. We have two electrons, both of mass Me. They are distance R1n attracted to the nucleus and R2n attracted to the nucleus. And these electrons repel one another and are some distance R12 away from each other. The electrons are free to move to any location in three-dimensional Cartesian space. So our wave function is going to be a wave function which depends on these six Cartesian coordinates, three coordinates of electron one and three coordinates of electron two. Our Hamiltonian in atomic units, as previously discussed, is negative one-half del one squared, kinetic energy of electron one, negative one-half del two squared, kinetic energy of electron two, minus two over R1n, the attraction of electron one to the nucleus, minus two over R2n, attraction of electron two to the nucleus, plus one over R12, the repulsion of the electrons from one another. So the energy of this system would be an integral from minus infinity to infinity of x1, y1, z1, and an integral over minus infinity to infinity of x2, y2, z2, all coordinates of all electrons, of psi star i, or sorry, of psi star of r1 and r2, times the Hamiltonian acting on psi of r1, r2. So it's the standard expectation value integral for our Hamiltonian operator, but now we have six dim dimensional coordinates, all Cartesian possibilities, negative infinity to infinity in all six dimensions. All right, so what does Hartree-Fock have to say about the energy of this system? So Hartree-Fock introduces a Hamiltonian, which gives us an effective Hamiltonian for each individual electron. So for electron one, the effective Hamiltonian it feels is its its kinetic energy, negative one half del one squared, plus its attraction to the nucleus, minus two over R1n, then plus this operator V effective, the effective potential energy it feels at all locations in space. This is called a mean field. So at any given point in space, it depends on where electron two is, what repulsion it feels relative to electron two. But that's really hard to compute because that would be a six dimensional integral and it depends simultaneously on the electron being everywhere. So what would be much simpler is if at any location in space, we knew what electron one feels on average when it feels the field of electron two being everywhere else. So electron two isn't at any particular location in space, it feels the total charge density of electron two over all space acting on it in that given position. So it's not explicitly feeling electron two, it's feeling electron two through its spread out charge density, which is the mean field presented by that other electron. So our effective mean field that electron one feels due to electron two is equal to, we integrate over all possible coordinates of electron two of its charge density, psi star r2, psi r2, so psi star psi is the probability density. This is the probability that electron two is at R2 times the, di the distance between our current location and that location of electron two and integrate that over all possible locations of electron two, giving us a mean field of how the average charge density of electron two repels our electron at that given location. So then the actual Schrodinger equation that we can solve for our individual electrons is that our effective Hamiltonian acting on this one electron orbital equals the orbital energy times our orbital. So it's an eigenvalue equation once we have specified this mean field operator giving us a mean field Hamiltonian. All right, and then we do the same thing for electron two except for we're integrating out how electron two feels the mean field of electron one. If there are more electrons, we see for each individual electron how they feel the mean field of all other electrons combined. So that's good and all, except for there's one problem. The Hamiltonian 
that electron 2 feels depends on the wave function of electron 1. The electron, the Hamiltonian that electron 2 feels depends on the wave function of electron 2. So our wave function depends on our operator, but our operator depends on our wave function. So this creates a problem of circular logic. So instead of this being a pure eigenvalue equation, this is what we call a pseudo eigenvalue equation, or we refer to this as the pseudo eigenvalue problem. So what we do to get around this is we do what's called the self-consistent field procedure. So sometimes Hartree-Fock you might hear referred to as self-consistent field. There are other methods that do self-consistent field too, but for the most part, when most people talk about SCF, they're talking about Hartree-Fock or another method called density functional theory. So what we do is, for our chicken and egg problem, for our operator in our orbital, we just guess an orbital to begin with. So we guess some initial orbital, psi, for each electron. We use that orbital. We calculate an effective mean field potential, which gives us our operator. Using our mean field, we can calculate our operator, calculate our wave functions. Ca using our new wave functions, we can get a new mean field operator. And we see, did our psi, did our wave function, did our orbitals change when we calculated these new orbitals using this new mean field? If they did, then we use the new mean field, calculate new orbitals, uh, calculate new operator, see if it changed again. If it didn't, then we're finally at our final uh, orbitals and our final wave function. So the speed at which we converge here really depends on how good our guess orbitals are. There are different methods to use guess orbitals. We're not going to uh, discuss those now, but basically we guess, we calculate an, a Hamiltonian, we get a new wave function, get a new Hamiltonian, and keep going until our orbitals and our energies are not changing anymore, giving us our final wave functions and our final energies. This whole procedure is a pseudo eigenvalue problem because our wave function and our operators are not independent, but the procedure we use to get around this is called the self-consistent field, which we are using for this Hartree-Fock method.